In this segment, we will look into Hibernate. We will see that how Hibernate uh, does its basic ORM things and uh, uh, basically how it provides the ORM capability. So, first thing first, let's assume that we have got a database here and it has, let's assume that it has got a user table. Okay. And this has got two columns, ID and name. Okay, now let's see first that how in the standard JDBC way the things would have done. So let's assume that our JDBC all is sitting here and then let's assume your program is running somewhere here basically. So what you do is that you first get a connection object. That's how you do in the JDBC way, correct? So this connection object is issued against the JDBC call which goes and gets the connection object from underlying connection from the database. So it opens the connection to the database. Then you start the transaction. So the JDBC will go and mark the transaction started here. Then let's say that you want to get the record from user. So how do you do that? You say select, let's say star from user where you would say id is equal to 1. So this issue call is issued here and this is given to database and what happens is that somewhere here you will get this results and you will create the user object for yourself the way you want to process that data. Let's assume that it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a piece of code which has multiple month method calls so it may happen that in the same context of same transition you might land up asking for same user. So, depending on if you have put some mechanism to manage this user object, otherwise what could happen is that you will actually again do this call of select again, select and then it is again issued to JDBC, it again goes there and you will again create another user object here, which is the same object, okay, but you land up creating two different objects. If you don't want that situation, you have to manage it in such a way that you know that this user object is there already, so I should not touch it again. So some bookkeeping needs to be done. Then you basically mark the transaction complete. So it goes, completes the transaction and then you close the connection. Okay, so this is how JDBC works. Now let's see that what happens when the hibernate enters into picture. So what I'll do is that I'll just remove this piece of thing from here and we'll see that how the whole thing now falls in place with hibernate in place. So let's assume this is the hibernate layer which has come into picture. Okay, and your program will basically shift from here to here. Your uh, your piece of code basically. It's all would be part of the same program, but your piece of code would now shift here. Because it will now start interacting with the Hibernate API, and not the direct JDBC API. So first thing what you do, you basically open a session. So open a session basically will result in getting a connection. Underlying Hibernate again uses JDBC, so this thing will now flow like this. So the connection, then through JDBC, again a connection is open. You said begin a transaction, then again this is mapped to this guy. Now comes the interest, interesting part, you say that get me the user. So you do it in an object oriented way. So you might say that user u is equal to session dot get and you pass the id. So, when you issue this call to Hibernate, Hibernate will actually convert that call into a JDBC call, go to the database, get the record and in turn back create the object. So, uh, let's actually create inside Hibernate. So, it will create this user object and give a handle of that to you, which now your U object would be pointing to this instance of user object. Now coming back to the same situation, you might end up asking the same user object and the context of same session somewhere down below. Now here Hibernate is smart enough. So it has this 
it knows that it has stressed already this object, it keeps it in a, a first order case, which is called a persistent context. And then it will see that, okay, I have already fetched this object. It will avoid this complete call. And it will just say that, see, if you say u1, that will just return the handle of u1. Okay, and then when you say transaction commit, again it goes from here, it goes here, and it will happen and go like this, and then you say close the connection. Uh, when the it says session dot close, it will close the connection, which again is going to be a JDBC. Another interesting thing Hibernate would done, do is that if you are doing some selections and some updates here, Hibernate may be smart enough that it will actually flush the state of your changes only just before the commit happens. So it will avoid multiple calls to the databases. So it sort of batches the calls and and uh, based on different conditions, it, it will batch the all the changes and go and do the updates in one go only. Uh, this is what is controlled by flush mode also. So essentially if you see that what Hibernate has done, it has actually provided you an object way of working with the uh, plain JDBC calls and then it is quite smart enough at many places so that you don't need to do bookkeeping and it might land up actually avoiding a lot of database calls. Hopefully this will help you to get a very good idea of the internals of Hibernate. Thank you.